In tonight's Tax Insider, call it a gift, call it graft, call it a mix of the two. It's December, the month when Congress typically passes a package of temporary tax breaks. They take effect just before the filing season. Is it time to make those breaks permanent, or should they be dumped along with your Thanksgiving leftovers? For answers, I'm joined by David Williams, president of the nonpartisan Taxpayers Protection Alliance. Dave, the Senate Finance Committee passed a package of 56 temporary tax breaks in July. They amount to $95 billion. What's in there, and what do they benefit? Well, Morris, tis the season. Uh, it's the season for Congress to try to wrap up any work they haven't done the full year, Good and luck. that includes the tax extenders. And boy, if you look in this package, it's really a weird mix of tax uh, breaks. You have tax breaks for NASCAR track owners, for rum in uh, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Then you have a tax break for school teachers, you have a tax break for businesses, big and small businesses, and just a whole bunch of other tax breaks. So it's a really a, a huge mixture of uh, different things here. How about one for me and you? I could think of some. Absolutely, and we'll vote for that. <laughs> yeah, and I'll drink to it if the rum's included. All right, Congress will take up the issue before the end of the year. They could extend this package through the end of 2016 and add to the deficit, or they could punt and impact one in six taxpayers. What's the right decision here? Well, the right decision is that they're doing this wrong and incorrectly. What they need what to surprise. do is separate each one of these tax extenders and vote on them separately because you look, you have the wind uh, production tax credit, you have ones for small and big businesses. This is not the way Congress should be doing businesses because you're having people kind of scratching their heads going, I like this tax break, but I don't like that other tax break. So why not vote on these individually and force members of Congress to put their name on each one of these? But they're not doing that. They want to mix this up and confuse people. I mean, it confuses me and it confuses taxpayers because on one hand, there are some good things happening. On the other hand, as we said, there are some bad things. So Congress needs to separate them and be honest with with the American public. All right, let's move on to federal fumbles. That's the title of a new report from Republican Senator James Lankford. He points out the 100 ways government dropped the ball. Give us the Cliffs notes here. So this is sort of the, the new Tom Coburn report. Remember Tom Coburn used to do this report every year. And I look at this report as my Christmas present because this is a report of just uh, of 100, as you can see, 100 federal fumbles. These are not only spending projects, but also regulation. He identifies $100 billion in wasteful and unnecessary spending, but also $800 billion in regulations that should be shelved. Now, Tom Coburn published a spending report each year called the Waste Book. You referred to that, that highlighted similar cons concerns. There's a group of lawmakers trying to succeed Coburn. Is Lankford the heir apparent? I think he is. And if you look at the examples in this report, they're absolutely brilliant. I mean, they'll make you cry. $65,000 to study what happens when you turn the lights on, uh, what bugs do when you turn lights on in a rural area. Now, Morris, let me ask you a question. What bugs do? This $65,000 study, who do you think did this? Which agency do you think did this study? What, EPA? I mean, I don't know. Uh, give me a clue. I, I'm, I am clueless on <laughs> who would do this. The National Park Service. Oh, okay. You would think maybe Interior, or they are part of Interior, but maybe Agriculture, but no, this is the National Park Service, $65,000. And the National Park Service also spent $5,000 for a, a documentary on a fiddler. The fid not the fiddler on the roof, another fiddler, but $5,000 for that documentary. And the National Institutes of Health, they spent, I think it was upwards of $45,000 to study why Russians smoke. All right, now not fiddler crabs either. No. And no. the reason I was thinking EPA for the bugs when the lights come on is that there was something involved with pesticides or getting rid of the bugs and maybe there's a new light bulb that will no. zap them or deter them or something. And so. we all know what happens when you turn the lights on. Bugs scurry. They, they run right. away. You don't need $65,000 to tell you that. Or the moths are attracted and yeah. then <laughs> burn up. All right. Before you go, let's talk about the House Speaker, Paul Ryan. He was on 60 Minutes last weekend and touched on tax reform. Bring us up to date. Well, this is exciting because Paul Ryan is not only the speaker, but he was chairman of House Ways and Means. So he is the tax guy in Washington, D.C., and he called for individual and corporate tax reform. This is crucial and critical. And, Morris, we have talked about this numerous times. Yeah. But when you have the Speaker of the House talking about this, this really is a lot of momentum that we need. And this is something I think Democrats can get behind because we've seen this in the past where Democrats have called for individual tax reform and corporate tax reform. 
reform. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world at about 40 percent. And even Democrats have admitted, well, we need to do something about that. President Obama, in his State of the Union address a few years ago, said, let's reduce the corporate tax rate. So Speaker Ryan is right on target here. He's absolutely right. And hopefully the Democrats and Republicans can come together and we can do something about this. Bring these companies back from Ireland. Have them put the money back in the U.S. Treasury. I mean, they're American companies. We, we've, you know, talked about inversions before. Instead of calling them un-American, just fix the tax rates. It'll help everybody with their 401k. Again, these are companies that, that's we're right, investing Mark. in. Look at Allergan and Pfizer. Exactly. They just announced a couple of weeks ago or last week that they're merging so they can save money on corporate taxes. And they'll be moving to, as you mentioned, Ireland, because Ireland, yeah. Ireland has such a low corporate tax rate. So this is these are the real-life implications of not doing tax reform, is that businesses are leaving and individuals are getting more and more frustrated. All right, and our 401ks would be better from it, too. Absolutely. Dave Williams, president of the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.